If there is a king of aesthetics as far as sports are concerned, the title definitely goes to MLB. From ats and jerseys to numbers and even belts, each team crafted a unique identity with an attention to detail that is still unmatched by any other sport. This is probably why baseball attire boasts such a high level of influence in streetwear culture, and it's not unusual to see it worn outside the context of the sport. A baseball jersey will always look better than a soccer shirt, and as far as I'm concerned, that's not an opinion, that's a fact. Such an intricate set of fonts and logos really shouldn't work this well, but when you put it all together, you can't help but like it. So what gives? Well, as far as I'm concerned, MLB is the golden standard for sports branding and visual design. And it's no wonder why fashion brands keep coming back to it, as we've seen in recent years from the likes of Alessandro Michele and the late Virgil Abloh. Unless you're Jonah Hill, you'd probably be more inclined to rock a baseball shirt than a basketball tank. And this alone makes it a serious enough topic to warrant its own video review. You know, just in case you'll get a call from the NBA and don't know where to start. And no, this has nothing to do with the fact that we're major baseball fans and we just spent the summer in the States. I mean, grow up. We're trying to run a business here. Draper. We have here. I am here to Draper. You. Get your eyes on this. 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 Just like in the corporate world, the branding of most teams is just fine. It won't floor you, it won't make you puke, it won't leave you with much of anything really. This is probably less of a problem with companies and something a sports team should probably be concerned about, but still, you can find something good in almost any team's attire. Almost is the keyword here. There's plenty of examples of masterful branding in the MLB world but two teams stand head and shoulders above the rest, and it's interesting to analyze the different tools they've used to build their image. Many teams have relied on monograms to establish their values and overall aesthetics, and some have definitely done a better job than others. Crafting good monograms is a true art form. When done right, it created some of the most iconic identities of all time. But most letter combos are not meant for one, and it can often lead to disaster. Dior's new letter lockup pattern mess will give you a rough idea of what not to do. What the fuck is this? To see how it's done, you don't have to look further than the Dodgers iconic monogram. LA offers a great lockup opportunity and they seized it with this clean serif slab. It's very simple, extremely reliable and thus makes a great candidate for a world-renowned icon. When relocating from Brooklyn to Los Angeles in the late 50s, the team had a chance to reset and set themselves apart from the crowded New York competition. They ditched the pinstripes and chose a different modern approach that vastly differed from the norm at the time and quite frankly still stands out today. The LA monogram made its first appearance in a letter sent by Tim McAuliffe to the owners of the team on December 11th, 1957. This letter is probably the sexiest thing you read all day and proof that the designer is not always right, just most of the times. Some folks in Brooklyn had the foresight to recognize the interlock potential and market this shape as its own identity, making it transcend the sport itself. In 2012, LA writer's David Kippen said it best. Unpacking this image, we find the very virtues that have always characterized at its best the Dodgers' way to play baseball. Thrift, teamwork, and a strong connection to the surrounding city. Thrift because nothing is wasted. The lower bar of the L, as McAuliffe put it, doubles as a crossbar of the A. Teamwork because the letter don't just share the crossbar, they overlap and interlock. And the connection, well, no one calls Boston B and NYC isn't generally known as NY, but we go by LA at least as often as Los Angeles. The LA logo has come to represent the entire city of Los Angeles, to the point that you almost forget that the city has, in fact, another team. The LA Dodgers created arguably the first truly modern baseball look, something that the new stars of Hollywood could rock with pride and a symbol that turned Pantone 924 into Dodgers blue. Also, Casper says that this is the best logo in the history of sports, but he's a Dodgers fan, so his opinion doesn't matter. It's not always that easy though. Your letter combo might not be the easiest to work with. And why, for instance, is definitely not as clean as LA. But if you know what you're doing, you can make it work regardless. To understand what I'm talking about, we have to go over to the Bronx, and this is where it gets juicy from the branding expert out there. 
The Yankees took a page from contemporary fashion brands, except they did it in the early 1900s. Instead of racking their brains to build a never seen before brand identity, they just borrowed existing assets to claim as their own. As the story goes, the NY monogram was created in 1877 by none other than Louis Comfort Tiffany, better known as the son of the luxury giant's founder. Tiffany was tasked by the New York Police Department to create a commemorative medal in honor of a fallen policeman. As it happens, Bill Devery, a former chief for NYPD himself, bought the Baltimore Orioles and moved them to New York. Right off the bat, Devery wanted to create a link with an established city icon, so he pushed hard to make the NY monogram the team's primary logo, which became official in 1909. The team initially was named the Highlanders, a pretty trivial reference to the elevated location for the team's home stadium in Upper Manhattan. Thankfully, New York press editor Jim Price despised the name, opting to call the team Yankees instead, because it would fit better in the headlines. The new name echoed the patriotic term used to describe the Northerners who fought the Confederates during the Civil War, and fans fell for it immediately. So you know, sometimes you gotta let your fans decide for you. The name change was made official in 1913, and the Yankees soon became the most popular team in all of sports. The pinstripes were all the buzz on the field and in the news, with Jody Maggio thanking God for making him a Yankee and then turning around to go marry Marilyn Monroe. And that's the bottom line, really. If the LA logo represents the city of LA, the Yankees monogram is synonymous with America itself. The pinstripes, the shaving policy, and the absence of names on the players' jerseys aren't just baseball things. They're American culture. They're pure branding. I mean, come on, in 1996, Spike Lee personally requested a red Yankees hat to match his outfit. And well, you know the rest. All right, look, let us know when you get that call, okay? Well guys, I hope you liked this quickie. If you want to get another designer review of famous sports branding, sound off in the comments. And if you want to see me get super annoying over yet another woke rebrand, go watch our Visa rant. I've been Alderman, and I'll see you in a couple of weeks with some pretty huge fireworks. But I won't spoil anything. Thank you.